You are locked on Cougars. Welcome to your Thursday edition of the podcast. Hope you all are doing fantastic out there in Cougar Nation. We have a lot to cover ahead on today's show. Chris Burgess, the head of the University of Utah, the game assistant coach. What does that mean for Mark Pope and the BYU men's basketball program? We'll delve into that. We'll also answer some of your questions. Opening up the listener mailbag here on a Twitter Thursday edition of the show. And of course, we'll catch up on the other news involving BYU athletics. One of the results from earlier this week as well as a Thursday schedule where you can find the Cougars in action. So plenty to get you ahead on today's show. It's all brought to you today by our title sponsor, Bet Online. BetOnline.net has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, without further ado, let's get rolling here. This is the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 14th, 2022. <laughs> You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As you guys heard, this is Locked On Cougars. My name is Jake Hatch. I'm your host here on Locked On Cougars, a resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And by the way, DJ and PK, for those of you who listen here locally, 20 years. They've been celebrating 20 years of doing their show together. Uh, fun celebration on the show tomorrow. A little bit of a tease ahead for you guys if you want to tune into that. But regardless, a big thank you for joining us. We are very proud to hear on the Locked On Cougars podcast to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. All right, getting rolling here on a Thursday. Let's talk about the big news in BYU basketball land, and that being the Chris Burke. Yes, the man who once upon a time spurned BYU, not once, but twice as a player going to Duke and then the University of Utah. Well, he is leaving his position as an assistant coach on Mark Pope's staff to join Craig Smith's staff at the University of Utah. Now, there are plenty of BYU fans out there. I saw on social media with their reaction saying that, well, he just turned his back on BYU. And Bob, guess what, folks? He went to Utah. He is an alum of the University of Utah. His daughter is playing volleyball for the Utah women's volleyball program. There are so many ties for Chris Burgess to go back to Utah. I completely understand why he decided to take this opportunity. The way I understand it and talking with enough folks familiar with the move, he is getting a pay bump in addition to likely being either the associate head coach or the lead assistant on Craig Smith's staff. Now, that may come as a surprise to some of you folks out there who were wondering, well, why wasn't he the lead assistant on Mark Pope's staff? He's not. Cody Fieger, if I'm not mistaken, is the lead assistant for Mark Pope. And obviously, a guy like Chris Burgess, he's got aspirations of moving up in the ranks. I know that he has aspirations of being a head coach at the Division I level. And obviously, getting more money, getting a title bump, getting a better title around your name, and then having an opportunity to go coach for the school that you once upon a time were a proud alum of. Well, you still are, I guess you're a proud alum alumnus of, but you played for that program. You sweat, blood, tears. You put it all into that program. I get why Chris Burgess decided to go back to Utah. This is going to leave a hole on BYU staff. There is no doubt about it. Chris Burgess was an elite recruiter, maybe the best recruiter outside of Mark Pope on BYU staff. Did a really good job bringing in elite talent to BYU, while at the same time allowing uh, guys to develop under his tutelage as well. Think about what Fusini Traore and Atiki Ali Atiki accomplished this year after being true freshmen who were called upon in a major pinch to contribute to the BYU basketball program. A lot lot of that development you can point directly to Chris Burgess. So yes, there is a sizable hole being left in Mark Pope's staff with this move. A couple of the things about this is Chris Burgess, he is a guy that is going to make life difficult for BYU when it comes to recruiting kids. He is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, he's going to go up to Utah. He'll be recruiting these kids here locally. Let's say okay, Colin Chandler. And there's going to be a huge conversation, by the way, just an aside here on Colin Chandler. Remember Britton Covey and the whole thing? Well, he's going to come to BYU after he comes home from his mission. Well, he's considering transferring to BYU. You know what? That's what's going to happen with Colin Chandler because Chris Burgess was very much a big part of Colin Chandler picking BYU over the next two years. And by the way, congratulations to Colin Chandler getting his uh, call to the Sierra Leone mission out there in West Africa. The next two years for him, essentially, are going to be a bunch of debates. Well, he's going to he's going to transfer to Utah when he gets home for his mission. You know that, right? He's going to he's going to be a Ute after all. 
I don't know what's going to ultimately transpire with that. But the biggest thing is Chris Burgess, he gives Craig Smith an elite recruiting chip when it comes to recruiting top-level LDS talent. Obviously, BYU will always have the tie-in with the LDS Church being their sponsoring institution. But there is going to be a new dynamic in the recruiting sphere for BYU with Chris Burgess up on the hill once again. Now, the question now becomes, who will Mark Pope backfill that spot with with regards to his assistant coaching staff? There are three names that popped out to me immediately, and these were also chronicled by Robbie McCombs over at Vanquish the Foe. And by the way, if you're not following Robbie's work and le- reading his work at VanquishTheFoe.com, you are missing out. Robbie is about on top of the basketball game in terms of covering BYU hoops as anybody in this media sphere covering the Cougars. And we got a lot of media members covering BYU sports, but Robbie, he absolutely kills it. And he had a really good list. And three of the names that I thought of right off the top are on his list as well. First one, Mark Madsen. Yes. The current sitting head coach of Utah Valley university. He mentions that BYU may chase him. And obviously you'd have to throw a bunch of money at Mark Madsen. We'll also probably giving him the associate head coach title, maybe a coach and waiting type designation for if, and when Mark Pope moves on to get him to come over. I think it's pretty unlikely that Mark Madsen comes over to BYU for anything less than the actual head coaching position. And yes, both Chris Burgess and Mark Madsen, whenever Mark Pope decides that he's done at BYU, if he decides to leave the leave the Cougars, those two would be on the short list, if not the top two candidates to replace Mark Pope as head coach for the BYU basketball program. Yeah, the thought of Chris Burgess leaving for Utah and coming back to BYU, I know that rubs some people the wrong way, but it's absolutely a scenario I could see playing out. I just don't see Mark Madsen leaving UVU at this juncture, but if there is a time for him to consider making a jump to a Power 5 program, which is what BYU is going to be, this would be the time to do it. Fardaz Amak, the star big man that he had at UVU that he really built his team around well he is moving on uh, apparently considering such illustrious programs as Kentucky and Gonzaga also considering going pro well there's gonna be a little bit of a turnover there in Orem if this was a time to consider maybe making the jump and deciding I want to look somewhere else this would be the time for Mark Madsen I just don't see that being likely the next name up on this list I'm just making sure I'm going over these in order is former BYU associate head coach Dave Rice yes Dave Rice of um the Dave Rose era rice was Dave Rose's right-hand man before leaving to become head coach at UNLV did not have the success he expected to have in his hometown of Las Vegas has been an assistant in a number of other places, most recently Washington, but he was out of the game last year. And Dave rice is about as familiar with BYU as any non-member of the LDS faith could be Dave rice. In my opinion, at one point had Dave Rose decided he was done at any earlier in his BYU tenure, Dave Rice might have given BYU administrators some thought of, do we want to hire a non-member coach? Or is Dave Rice that guy? He was that uh, beloved when he was at BYU. did a great job on the recruiting trail. He is a savant when it comes to tactics and all that type of stuff. You could do a lot worse than bringing Dave Rice in and making him part of the BYU basketball family once again as well. And then the final name that came to me was the name of Paul Peterson. That may be a name that many of you are not familiar with, but Paul Peterson is the head coach of the famed Wasatch Academy in Mount Pleasant, Utah. He is a member of the LDS faith. He is African-American, and he would obviously have a connection to BYU on two fronts with regards to having sent guys to BYU while also being a member of the sponsoring faith. Paul Peterson seems like to me he'd be running number three on this list. Uh, I know that Robbie McComb has mentioned that if a guy like Nick Robinson, who have there, there have been some rumors out there that Nick Robinson may be looking to leave BYU as well. If Nick Robinson were to leave BYU staff, Paul Peterson, in my opinion, would absolutely be on the short list to be hired as an assistant for the BYU men's basketball program. So uh, I look at those three and they're very much guys who are very much in play. But this list is going to be a lot bigger than what I'm laying out for you here. And then one name that Robbie McCombs brought up that he uh, quotes sources on mentioning this name was Khalil Fennell. I hope I got it. Yeah. Khalil Fennell, who was an assistant most recently at Louisville. He'd been the director of ops for the Louisville Cardinals under Chris Mack. And then Chris Mack recently got fired by Louisville. He is now a free agent. Technically speaking of Fennell, he's not a member of the faith. He is a minority minority candidate, uh, a black American who would come in and obviously bring the non-LDS uh, tie to BYU like Cody Feger, but 
also has ties to BYU via a guy that BYU fans are probably familiar with the name with, Barrett Peary. Barrett Peary was the head coach of Portland State for quite a while before taking the top assistant job at Texas Tech, a la what BYU fans may envision Mark Madsen doing, but I just don't see Mark Madsen doing that same route. But a guy like Khalil Fennell could be one of those outside-the-box hires that Mark Pope decides to make. The biggest thing I think you need if you're Mark Pope is you need to make sure you keep at least one active member of the LDS faith on your staff. And right now, Nick Robinson fills that role. If Nick Robinson were to jump ship, and let's say you decide Dave Rice is one of your assistants who is a non-member who's very good at recruiting LDS talents, he understands what the whole recruiting dynamic is at BYU and all the tenets of the faith, that's very nice. But you'd probably want to bring a guy like Paul Peterson in to help bring in that LDS element to your to your coaching staff. I know that sounds like short-sighted and kind of weird and hokey in a way, but it is absolutely a concern that I know administrators of BYU would have. And obviously there are many BYU fans out there who harbor those same things. So there you go. That's a short list of what I expect uh, Mark Pope to look at. But like I said, this is not an exhaustive list of candidates for Mark Pope to consider. I would think that Dave Rice is my one of my personal favorites. I, I I thought Dave Rice was absolutely phenomenal when he was at BYU. Maybe the the head coaching gig wasn't for him. Maybe he was bound to be a career assistant. But he took his shot. Has had opportunities at other programs. Maybe you kick the tires on him once again, bring him back to Provo and see what you can do. We'll see what happens, but it's going to be a very interesting time ahead for BYU. I don't think that this hire or hires should have got like Robinson also decided to jump ship. I don't think those will be done very quickly, but today is also the open of the national signing period. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, Athletes can sign their national letters of intent. A guy like Sean East, in theory, could sign as soon as today with the BYU basketball program. I don't think that happens necessarily. Colin Chandler has already signed with BYU in the early signing window. So, And the, the best part is the signing window, you know how BYU football, you have like a three-day window in the early period. Well, guess what? The national signing window for this period is a month long. It doesn't close until mid-May. So there's a long way to go for BYU, getting new assistant coaches in place, potentially adding to your recruiting class, bringing in transfers. It's a whole lot to cover, and we'll have it all covered for you guys right here on Locked On Cougars. All right, coming up next, you guys are going to steer the rest of the show. Your questions, I asked for them on social media as well as on this podcast earlier in the week. We'll get to as many of them as we possibly can here in just a moment. Today's podcast is brought to you in part by our friends over at Athletic Greens. Here you go. Here's another graphic for you guys. That's Athletic Greens for you. What Athletic Greens is, my friends, is it is a product that is to help you guys optimize your immune system. Uh, if you don't like taking all the different pills and vitamins that seems like the, your doctor or your physician wants you to take, this is a supplement that can help get everything you need in just one drink. That's the best part. With one delicious scoop of AG1, as they call it, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients helps support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging, pretty much everything under the sun. So give it a shot, my friends. It's absolutely incredible. The best part is it is lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, or just simply a regular diet, it can contains one less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, and no artificial anything while still tasting amazing. The best part is it costs you less than three dollars a day. You're investing in your help and it's your health, excuse me, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. For those of you who may have that habit or just your maybe dirty diet soda habit for us here in Utah, it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance, my friends. So give it a shot. Athletic Greens right now is also going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin. D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Once again, that's athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. One more time, that's athleticgreens.com slash college. Time to talk your questions or answer your questions, what I should say. But want to remind you guys that thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen every day. Now for a big announcement, my friends, starting Thursday, April 28th. Tune into the Locked On NFL Drafts live. You heard that right. Live coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. I will be a part of that, I, un I understand. And for those of you dying to know where your team is going to be taking players and who they'll be taking, catch Odyssey and Locked On NFL's mock draft special, which is hosted by Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show here on the Locked On Podcast Network. That'll be taking place all week long leading up to the first pick 
on April 28th. All right, your guys' questions I actually have a correction and retraction. I, I, a correction, it's not a retraction, it's a correction coming in from a GFOP of the podcast. That's our friend Matthew Detweiler. Matthew reached out to me, and yesterday I was talking about BYU's financials and the numbers put out by the U.S. Department of, of the U.S. Department of Education. I want to say academics? No, it's not it. But nonetheless, uh, Matthew pointed out to me and he sent me a text overnight uh, after listening to that podcast saying that on the Cover 3 podcast, which is a podcast covering college football from CBS Sports, I think he said it was Bud Elliott made this point that college sports are quote unquote nonprofits and then will also quote unquote burn money to avoid showing profit margins to keep themselves within the guidelines and laws that govern nonprofit status. So that is why that number in terms of the overall expenses versus the overall um, uh, revenues was exactly the same for BYU. I can tell you this much. BYU is not spending dollar for dollar what they're bringing in. They're probably getting close to it, but it, once they go into the Big 12, when you're potentially making $50 million where your athletic budget before this is what we were, I think we talked $35 million yesterday, you're going to all of a sudden come up with $15 million reasons why. Like, what are we going to be claiming here? So it's just one of those funny things about college athletics. And like I said, this is not just BYU. This is across college athletics. You go through those lists from the U.S. Department of I, 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 I Academics. Education. My apologies for those you watching, on, watching or listening to this. But it's just one of those things that you look at and say, okay, you know what? So be it. Let's just move along here. And uh, we'll we'll just... We'll understand. Yeah, you're a nonprofit, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. SEC and Big Ten who are making a hundred million dollars here relatively quickly. Yeah, okay, that's real nonprofit status. Let me tell you guys. All right, now actually onto your questions. Uh, we had a listener, Megan, reach out via email. You can send in your questions, comments, concerns, advertising inquiries anytime to lockedonbyu at gmail.com. She sent this email saying why I called BYU's roster cut down earlier this week a purge. Now, this is the reason why I called it a purge is because, as I mentioned, BYU currently in the spring period had 132 guys on that roster. During the season, the actual season, the NCAA guidelines stipulate you can only carry 123 players. So, of the 132 players, if BYU were to run every single player from the spring roster back this fall when school started, still, there are going to be nine players who could not be on the roster, period. The other issue is going into training camp, you can only carry 105 players on the roster, 85 scholarship players, 20 walk-ons. That means 23 other guys who were on that roster from the spring period cannot participate in fall camp, which runs the month of August. So that is 23 plus nine. Now we are at 38 players. Oh, and also we have some incoming recruits and probably some other preferred walk-ons that you have promised spots to on that 105 or 123 man roster as well. Folks, they are cutting upwards of potentially 40, 45, 50 guys. And I know cutting is probably the wrong term, but letting guys know where they stand and saying, this is what you're up against here. It, I'm not saying that every guy that is going to uh, is gonna walk out of BYU is going to have a good experience, but there are going to be some guys who have some hard feelings after all this goes down. And it, like I said, it's, it's nothing against the players themselves. It's nothing against BYU staff. Blame COVID, blame the circumstances the NCAA created with allowing uh, COVID years and being able to have bloated rosters for a year or two and then immediately saying, all right, back to 123 and deal with it. The NCAA could have helped this out and could have really smoothed things out and uh, kind of lessened the hit and done it over a number of years. No, they just said, you know what? Here's your hard and fast rules. Deal with it. That's how the NCAA operates. Any of you who listen to this podcast for any length of time know that I am no fan of how the NCAA operates. I am all for, they already voted on this, to redo uh, the constitution of the NCAA. A lot of the divisions can kind of govern themselves, lay out their own new rules. I'm happy for that. I'm also not holding my breath that the NCAA is going to get out of its own way anytime soon. So the reason why I called it a purge is because you're turning over a massive part of the BYU football roster. And it's unfortunate because, like I said, a lot of good players, a lot of good young men, guys that I have had on this podcast, I would hope to have on this podcast down the road, they may not get another opportunity to play for BYU. But the good news is the transfer portal exists. There are other levels of football, FCS, Division II, et cetera, that will give these guys a chance to play ball if they want to continue to do it. And maybe some of them uh, do decide to stick it out with BYU and they make it. Good for them. But that's why I called it a purge, Megan. So hopefully that answers your question. I, I know that it sounds bad to call it a purge, but I don't know, I don't know what other term was 
adequate to describe what's going on right now. All right. Other question coming in. Uh, this came in. I got this DM to me. I believe it was on our Locked On Cougars uh, DMs. B- by the way, my DMs, I'm at Jacob C. Hatch on Twitter. Also, the Locked On Cougars DMs, Locked On Cougars on Twitter is also wide open. So anytime you want to send a message to me, a question, a concern, a comment, you can do that as well. Nate DM the show and said, if BYU football, are they done in the transfer portal so far as you know right now, Jake? I think the question, and Nate, you didn't specify this. I think there's a lot of people out there wondering if BYU may chase another quarterback in the transfer portal. The way I understand it right now, and just going back to our last question, with that roster situation BYU's got themselves in football-wise, I think for all intents and purposes, they are probably done in the transfer portal. I asked Kalani Satake the final day of fall, uh, not fall camp, spring camp, if they were done in the transfer portal. He said, we'll continue to monitor the situation, but the tone I kind of got from him is, yeah, we're pretty much done unless somebody who is just absolutely lights out, a uh, grade A, 100%, you take this guy all day, every day, and uh, uh, twice on Sunday, they go after a guy like that, they'd probably make room in that circumstance. But right now, it sure looks like BYU is done in the transfer portal, at least for this current recruiting cycle. Next year, I think BYU absolutely will pursue multiple guys in the transfer portal. I think running backs, a quarterback, I think defensive backs will always be part of the conversation for BYU with the transfer portal. Uh, defensive linemen, if there's a stud defensive end out there, I'm sure BYU would kick the tires on that. But the transfer portal is not to be the... How do I say this? It's not to be the end-all be-all. Don't pull a Texas State. And those of you who have been paying attention to recruiting, and I don't know why you'd pay this close of attention, but I do for some reason, but I'm a nerd, and I think that's well established on this podcast. Texas State last year in their recruiting class did not sign a single high school recruit. They went entirely transfer portal. You don't want to do that. The high school recruiting is still going to be the backbone and the baseline and the foundation of your program. The transfer portal's idea of it is to create uh, opportunities for guys that find themselves in disadvantageous positions to find new opportunities and also for college football programs to have a stopgap to fill a need for maybe one or two years. That's kind of more of what it means. It's a supplement rather than the rule for BYU, and that's the way it should be moving forward. So hopefully it answers your questions, both Megan and Nate. Uh, also, I also had one other question come in. It's more of a lifestyle question, and it kind of made me chuckle. And this one uh, came in via email. And I'm going to leave the name off of it because they didn't uh, necessarily, I I don't know. (sighs) I hesitate to come off as all preachy on this, but so I'm going to leave the name of who sent this email in, but they reached out and said, Jake, you've talked a lot recently about losing weight and trying to get yourself into just a better health situation overall. And I have, I've talked about that often. Uh, I've had Rich Hart and Elevate Fitness, who was a sponsor here for a while, who I've been working with for over a year. And Rich is probably listening to this and, interested to hear what I say, but let me just clarify one thing. And they asked me, so Jake, what can I do? What are some simple things I can do to get myself into a better health situation? Well, simply put, uh, what I've done with Rich Hard is I've cut out all of the carbs, essentially in my diet. I'm trying to get rid of what they call insulin resistance. And if you want more on what insulin resistance is, go to insuliniq.com. It's not a paid advertisement anymore. Uh, it's They used to be an advertiser. Uh, Elevate Fitness may come back on. Insulin IQ may come back on at some point, but right now they are not a sponsor. If you want to learn more about insulin resistance and why it's so critical in our health, go to insuliniq.com. Now, a couple of things I have noticed that have helped me quite a bit. Uh, I've mentioned on social media that I've been trying to keep a New Year's resolution that I've been doing all year long, and it's a push-up routine that I started on, I think it was actually December 27th. I consider the new year like right after Christmas ends. I don't necessarily count it on January 1. My goal towards the end of uh, 2022, so by the end of this year, my goal is to be doing at least 100 push-ups every single day. My idea for it was is to do it in ramp up. And what I was doing in the month of January was doing between 10 and 15 push-ups every day. And the goal was to add five to 10 push-ups every month until I got to the 100 push-ups thing. And beyond that, push it even higher than that. I it, It's just something I've been trying to do. I've been trying to do small things in my day-to-day life. I'm trying to go out for a walk with my kids and walk around my neighborhood, just being more active. And I I know that sounds really, really uh, hokey in a way, but it's just making simple changes in your diet, your routines, the way you behave in your personal life. It can have an, an impact. I've lost 47 pounds 
over, let's see, now we're just over a year. It was, it was funny enough. Uh, I actually met with Rich most recently on St. Patrick's day and we pulled up my information. He tracks uh, my health situation and some we do it at elevate fitness. And like I said, it's not a sponsorship and I'm going way too long on this question, but we actually had met the previous year for the very first time. The first time I met with Rich was the previous St. Patrick's day. So what are we, we're now in almost, uh, yeah, we're in mid, uh, mid April. So I'm a year and a month into working with rich heart and elevate fitness and insulin IQ. I have lost 47 pounds. And I can tell you right now, I have never been in better shape since my high school playing days when I was 18 years old. I'm now 35. You can do the math on that. So uh, like I said, I, I don't want to out who this was, but they did send in the question and said, feel free to talk about this on the podcast. I just don't necessarily want to, I guess, uh, put you on blast, or put you on notice for that. So hopefully that answers the question out there. Mystery uh, submission. There you go. All right. Coming up in just a moment, we'll get to the other news and notes involved in BYU athletics. Some good news for Alex Barcelo, as well as two former BYU football players, hoping to hear their names called in the NFL draft. We'll also get to the Thursday schedule for other BYU teams in action. We'll get to all of that momentarily. Today's podcast is also brought to you in part by our friends over at Bet Online. As we mentioned in the open, they are our title sponsor. And Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports information needs. Find all the latest sports developments, including league reviews and news including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season now at betonline.net. It is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more futures odds, that type of stuff. They've got it all for you guys. It's a full service sports book. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action available to you now at betonline.net. It's all courtesy of your friends at BetOnline where the game starts. All right, time to wrap up today's show with the other news involved in BYU athletics. So I'm going to be, uh, my eyes are going to be wandering a little bit. I'm just actually reading this off of my sheet here. Let's start off with this. Alex Barcelo was headed to play in the prestigious Portsmouth Invitational that involves the top 64 seniors in college basketball, and that will allow them to work out in front of NBA personnel. This is a huge accomplishment for AB. He has aspirations of making it to the highest levels of basketball, that meaning the NBA. Well, this is a huge opportunity for it. The Portsmouth returns after a two-year hiatus due to COVID COVID and other related factors. And this will allow Barcelo to play in front of NBA representatives from all 30 NBA teams. One thing I have always thought about Alex Barcelo is if he was able to get into a workout with an NBA team and show off his shooting prowess, that was going to be absolutely huge for his chances of making maybe a G League roster, a two-way contract, that type of a deal. This Portsmouth deal is going to give him that chance. Funny enough, he will be teaming up with former USF star Jamari Bouye. Yes, the former Don himself. They knocked BYU out of the West Coast Conference Tournament. Well, Jamari Bouye will be on the same team as Alex Barcelo at this Portsmouth Invitational. It's a big opportunity for both of them, but we're rooting for AB here. I hope that he gets to show that three-point shooting skill that he has shown his entire career at BYU. He is a very, very savvy player. And like I said, if he can show well at this, there may be an NBA team who says, okay, this is a kid that's worth drafting and stashing or at least signing to a two-way contract and giving him a chance to develop off the bench for us, maybe being a spot-up shoot, spot up shooter for us on our bench unit. All right, other things to get to. James Ampey and Uriah Leatawa, congratulations to them. They are both named to the National Football Foundation's Hampshire Honor Society that honors college football players who have maintained a cumulative 3.2 GPA for their entire career. That is very impressive. I know that um, Uriah has talked about the fact that he, I think he went to the Marriott School of Business. To carry a 3-2 while also playing high-level college athletics, in this case, college football, it's no easy task. I think there were 1,500 players nationwide added to this honor society, but congratulations to both James Ampey and Uriah Lopa Leotawa on that honor. Other news, Annie Hakawizik, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, she finished in fourth place solo to lead the BYU Women's Golf Program to a sixth place, sixth place team finish at the Seattle University Red Hawk Invitation that was held at Chambers Bay earlier this week. She fired a final round 74, good for 54 to whole total of 218 to record her third top four finish of the season. It's a good showing for her. BYU shot 919 as a team finishing in sixth place. The Cougars are now getting ready for the West Coast Conference Championships. Those are just two weeks out, so obviously they'll be back home working out down at Riverside Country Club as well as Fox Hollow getting their game tuned up. 
for those WCC championships. Scheduled today includes BYU men's tennis hosting Pepperdine and noon mountain time, depending on when you listen to this. It could be a rather brisk day. They may move that to the indoor tennis course, just considering the temperatures are expected to still be in, what, the high 40s, maybe the low 50s at best in Provo this week. Uh, BYU baseball all, also opening a four-game series at Nebraska today at 4 p.m. That'll be on the BYU Sports Network radio-wise with Greg Rebell on the call. As you guys remember earlier this week, Mike Littlewood abruptly resigning his position as BYU baseball head coach. I had a chance to exchange text with Coach Littlewood. What he told me is he is doing, quote, good, and he is not worried about the baseball program. He says, I'll be rooting them on. I'll have their back. I know he spoke to the Salt Lake Tribune and Kevin Reynolds about it pretty extensively, saying that he's planning on taking a short hiatus and then getting back into college athletics at some point. The interesting part is that college athletics, he was a high-level Division I men's basketball official, actually had opportunities to make it to the NBA. He told us on this podcast, I think, about that. I know it was chronicled most recently uh, by Dave McCann for the Deseret News, but if he wants to get back into athletics, he could go the officials route. He could be a, an a official, a referee. Uh, I know that he has got all kinds of different opportunities and maybe baseball is not completely out of the question for him as well, but it's unfortunate. Just it, it's a disappointing uh, resignation because like I said, coach uh, Littlewood, he is the salt of the earth. I always enjoy my uh, conversations with him, but he'll be rooting on the Cougars as we all will. Uh, first pitch in their first matchup of this four game set against the Corn Huskers is this afternoon at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Like I said, there'll be a radio call. Greg Bell will have the call on the BYU Sports Network for you guys if you want to tune into that. And then the final note for you guys is the track and field teams. They are in Southern California this week. They're already participating in the Brian Clay Invitation, which began yesterday, as well as the Mount Sac Relays, which begin today. And then, oh, finally, the Beach Invitation, the hosted by Long Beach uh, State, will also begin tomorrow. So it'll be a trio of SoCal events that BYU men's and women's track and field athletes will be competing in. We'll have a full recap for you guys once the weekend wraps up on our Monday edition of the show. Looking forward. Coming up on tomorrow's show, who knows what will break in the meantime. I heard that the news about uh, Chris Burgess was could be happening. I figured it would be a couple days out, and then all of a sudden, like overnight, it was like, all right, here it goes. So it's one of those crazy things about the college cycle, especially the news cycle when it involves BYU athletics. We'll have that for you guys. We'll have some more on BYU football. And if you got more questions you guys would like to weigh in, with your thoughts or you have questions that I could answer for you guys, I'd love nothing more than to field those as well as we round out this Friday, tomorrow's Friday edition of the Locked On Cougars podcast. Let's round out the week here on the podcast. All right, that's going to do it. A big thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys taking the time to download the show. Please make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Hit that follow button uh, wherever you listen to your podcast on. Enable notifications, like, comment, share with your family and friends, all that good stuff. Your guys' support is very much appreciated. Also want to encourage you guys to go make Locked On NFL Draft your second listen of the day second listen of the day now it is your one-stop shop daily for all the latest when it comes to the nfl draft draft order prospect evaluations how trades and signings are affecting the draft philosophy for front offices they got it all covered for you guys it is free and available wherever you get your podcast all right that'll do it have a great rest of your day this has been the locked on cougars podcast for april 14th 2022 and we will talk to you guys tomorrow